What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a free add-on that ships with Blender that you can use in order to quickly create different kinds of trees inside your Blender models. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so to start off, we're gonna enable this add-on by going up to Edit, Preferences, going into Add-ons, and you're gonna do a search for Sapling Tree generator. You're going to want to make sure this little box is checked right here. And so this add-on basically creates trees depending on parameters that you define. And so if you want more information about this add-on, you can click on this button for documentation. That'll pop up a page that gives you information about how the add-on works. And so we're going to go ahead and move the default dog out of the way. So we'll move her over here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do a shift A in order to start adding different trees. So in this case, these trees live under the curve section under sapling tree generator. And so if you click on this, what this is going to do is this is going to create a tree. And so you can see how when you create a tree, you get a little box that pops up over here where you can edit different things in order to adjust the way that the tree looks. And so one thing about editing trees with this is note that you need to be careful not to click off of this, because if you click off of this, you might lose your menu. If you lose your menu, you're pretty much stuck. Um, sometimes if you don't do anything else, you can come back in here and press the F9 key to get the menu back. But in general, see, it gets kind of twitchy when you do that though. So in general, just try to get all of your edits done before you click off of your trees um, inside of your model. Otherwise you might lose that menu and the ability to make any more changes. And so if we were to add a tree in here, so if we were to do a shift A, go to curve and add a sapling tree, um, you can edit all of these different things in here in, in order to kind of adjust things like the scale of your tree or the different scale variations or other things like that. Um, but probably one of the things you're going to want to get most familiar with is the presets down here. So if you click this drop down or pop up in this case, and select different presets, you're going to get different results. Notice how with this tree right here though, this one got created and it's just a bunch of lines. And so if you ever get a tree that's created with a bunch of lines, just make sure you're in the geometry drop down. You can just check the box to bevel in order to create those, or those 3D branches. So this preset right here is going to allow you to select different kinds of trees. So pines, maples, there's a bunch of different kinds of trees and we'll talk in a minute about how to add leaves to them. For right now, we're focusing on like trunks and branches and other things like that. And notice how if you get something like this Douglas fir that's just like super big, you can come in here and you can adjust the scale of it in order to adjust how big that tree is going to be created. But for now, let's just go with the small maple tree. And so you can use this to adjust the size of your tree and some of your secondary shapes. You can also go into the branch radius option in order to adjust things like um, the scale of your branches, so how big they're going to be. You can see how you can make them wider or narrower using this slider, as well as the radius of those using this slider right here. And so some of these do some kind of odd things. You need to be a little bit careful with them. Like this one, for example, takes these and makes them into tubes. But if you ever get something in here where you don't like the result, just mouse over um, the value that you had in here and just hit the backspace key in order to reset that to its default settings. So you can use the branch radius to adjust the size. You can use the branch splitting and notice how I'm getting that weird result again. I'm just gonna go back into my branch radius and just set this back to zero again. And then in your branch splitting, you can use this to adjust how many branches you have inside of your model. So this one, for example, you can see how as I adjust the number of levels, I'm getting more and more branches in here, but you have to be really careful because this can create a lot of branches. And generally speaking, and it kind of depends on what you're doing, you don't always want all of the branches to be created to this level of detail because it's just going to slow your model down. So I'm going to bring this back to a level of two. But there's other things in here you can adjust as well, like the different angles of the different leaves. Um, I, I find myself doing a lot of trial and error in here on this just to kind of adjust my tree to what I want it to be. So branch growth allows you to kind of adjust the way the branches are growing in here. So you can adjust different lengths and other things like that. So again, just a lot of different things you can adjust in order to customize your trees. Um, I'm going to skip to the leaves 
at this point because the leaves is something that a lot of people want to add to their trees. So when you go to the leaves setting, you can notice how there's no leaves in here right now. So if you want leaves, you can check the little box right here for show leaves. So when you do that, what that's going to do is that's going to add leaves to your tree. And um, you can adjust these so that they're rectangular or different kinds of faces if you want them to. So that one gets a little bit weird. That's putting a bunch of bonnies in here as leaves. So again, just kind of play around with this a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave it as, we'll leave it for hexagonal as of right now. You can use this to adjust the number of leaves that are in here. So you can use this to make these really more realistic. But you need to be careful just because, again, that can be a lot of geometry inside your model. Um, so you can adjust the like rotation and other things with your leaves in here as well. So we'll talk in a minute about how I can add a material to these leaves. So and in this video, I'm not going to get too far into the armature or animation settings. Um, I believe the animation setting allows you to animate the trees so that the branches and leaves actually move. We can talk about that in a future video if there's enough interest. But for now, what I want to do is talk about how to texture these. So there's really a couple different ways that you can do this. So the easiest way is obviously going to be to texture these with colors. So to texture these with colors, all you have to do is select these, go into your material properties and just add a new material and then just adjust the color. So that's very simple. There's nothing new to that. We've done that um, a bunch of different times. You could do the same thing for your leaves. So you could create a new leaf material with a color right here. But a lot of the time what you want to do is you want to actually apply textures to these different objects. And so there's really two pieces in here that we're going to talk about. The first is how to apply a texture to your leaves, right? Because right now your leaves are just like colors with little hexagons on them. But you can come in here and you can actually in the shading section, you can add a texture to those leaves. So if we go into shading, so this is a leaf set that I've downloaded from CCO Textures and uh, we can talk and uh, so I will link to this in the notes down below. There's a number of different kinds of leaves that you can uh, that you can download in here. And then we're just going to map them to our leaves on our tree. So to start off, and I will link to a video about how to quickly create this, uh, this uh, principled BSDF setup using Node Wrangler. But I'm just going to do a control shift T. And then I'm just going to select my different leaves by doing a shift click and click on principled texture setup. And so what that did is that quickly set up this principled texture. So now if we were to go into material preview mode, you can see how this has been applied to these leaves, but it's not in here quite right, right? So it's being kind of tiled across these and they don't look very good. Well, one of the cool things about this add-on is it sets everything up with the UVs properly. So if I was to go into UV editing in that tab, Notice how if I select all of these leaves, they all get kind of stacked together on top of each other. Well, what that means, and I'm gonna click this little drop down and I'm gonna set this to be our color map, is that means that I can select this and I can size it so I can scale it along the X axis. I can actually size it. I can actually size it so that these leaves um, get aligned with the leaf texture that's in here. So now if I look at this and I look closely at these leaves, you can see I have a leaf texture that's being applied on here. And uh, so I'm gonna tab back into edit mode. And so you can use this to quickly map textures onto these leaves. Obviously these leaves are maybe a little longer and narrower, so it might be good to get a different texture that's in here, but you can see how this is pretty easy to do. And so on the other hand, if we tried to do the same thing with a bark material from CCO Textures, so I have a tree bark material that I've downloaded, but you can see how if you look at this one, it doesn't get mapped in quite the same way, right? So you have some issues in here with the way that this is mapped out. And so that's because if we were to tab into this object in object mode or in edit mode, if you look at this, this is actually made up of a number of different curves, right? So it's not actually made up of geometry right now. It's made up of a curve that then is getting a thickness applied to it inside of the object. Well, what we can do is if we go back into layout mode for a second, we select our trunk, we can go to object, convert to, and then we want to say mesh from curve. And so if we do a convert to mesh from curve and then tab into this, 
notice how what this has done is this is now applied um, instead of this being a curve this is now in here as actual geometry so it took that curve that was displaying as geometry and it's now in here as actual geometry so now if we go back into our UV editing we can scale this so that our bark material is being created in a more appropriate way so and you can make more adjustments to this to make this tile a little bit better but overall this allows you to quickly add materials to both your trees and your leaves inside of blender so leave a comment below and let me know what you thought was this helpful to you did you know this add-on was available i just love having that conversation with you guys if you like this video please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new blender content every week as always thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys